Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise offering. For is worthy to be exalted and worthy to be praised. Amen and amen. I was going to share a little bit earlier, but then some other things happen in between. My apologies. But I want to share with you as the foundations that my Lizzie and I have and that was laid in our lives when we became Christians. And these very foundations are the foundations that have kept us during every storm. Because Jesus himself said that a wise man will build his house upon the rock. See, then your foundation is strong. And when the storms of life come, your, because your foundation is strong, you will be able to weather uh, that storm and be able to stand. Unfortunately, uh, there are uh, those that were built their uh, Christian foundation upon sand. And when the storms of life come, their foundation cannot sustain them. And many in this hour, unfortunately, worldwide, globally, they have grown cold towards their uh, first love towards God. And uh, so today I'm starting a series on discipleship. And this is going to be very practical foundations. We're not going to get into any deep stuff. And I want to share with you as well uh, what Jesus was saying. And then also these foundations that my Lizzie and I, that we uh, received, uh, what was it? Maybe 40, uh, how many, almost 40 years ago or so. Uh, so uh, get ready, make some notes, and uh, let's get right into it, okay? I'm, I'm really preparing for the harvest. The prophet told us there's a harvest, and I'm just standing on God's word. Hallelujah. So let's just go here. Uh, first of all, let's go to Matthew 4.19. And let's kick off with that. Matthew 4.19. Then he said to them, that's Jesus, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. There's the call. He says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So uh, it's basically a, like a, uh, uh, a threefold call, almost just in that verse. First, he says, uh, follow me. In other words, come. Secondly, follow me. Thirdly, go make fishes of man. Now, when we apply these principles, you are going to strengthen your foundation. But I have not yet shared with you what is your foundation. So there are about six uh, key pointers uh, with regards to your foundation. So Jesus is saying uh, discipleship is a call to follow Jesus. That's our first priority. Jesus, it started with Jesus and it's going to finish with Jesus. The starting point of being a disciple is to follow Jesus. Following him requires that we give up all our life. We give up our whole lives, your mind, your will, your emotions. We've got to give up our past disappointments. And uh, we've got to embrace our present requirements. And we've got to bring the future of what God is saying about you and I into our present to silence our past mistakes. 
Now, discipleship, God bless you, Kim. Uh, discipleship is a call to fish for people. If you've never been a fisherman of men, this is the call. Fishers of men. When we follow that command, then we are going to strengthen our foundations. Now, I've not yet shared with you, uh, there's about six or seven foundations that my Lizzie and I am just looking here uh, over there in my notes uh, that we have received and that has sustained us all these years. So remember, this is just an introduction now, but remember the foundations, I'm just about to uh, unravel that. So discipleship is a call to fish for people. Jesus expects all who follow him to help others find and follow him. If you want to keep the foundation strong, we've got to obey this instruction from our Lord Jesus. You see, following Jesus does not mean that we cut off all contact with non-Christians. That is the biggest mistake that religious orders made. When I say religious, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you know, they're so sad, the seas, because they didn't believe in the resurrection. Now, okay, uh, we are not to cut ourselves off from non-Christians. So that, those religious spirits, uh, you know, used to train or train people that, uh, uh, that, you know, what has light got in common with darkness? And so uh, people who became Christians withdrew from non-Christians. And that is not how discipleship works. For God so loved this world. For God so loved sinners. He hated their sin, but he loved sinners. That's why Jesus Christ came to die for sinners. Hallelujah. We're not to separate ourselves uh, from sinners or non-Christians. We ought to get involved. All right, let me just carry on. This is just a, a little introduction, and we're going to do it in different parts, okay? Uh, it means that we must actively seek to introduce Jesus, whether it's, there's a party, go and introduce Jesus at a party. Introduce Jesus in a bar where people are drinking. Yes, what? That, that's why we are the salt of the earth. I used to take a, a, our home group a, a, a leaders, home cell leaders, uh, the one time. I took them into the bar. Yeah. And uh, so there we all walk in with our little, with our Bible and uh, under the arm. And uh, everybody's got a little pad to make notes. And we uh, uh, managed to get some tables together. And we had a Bible study equipping right there in the bar. <laughs> how, how cool is that? And uh, then the barman was so, uh, he was like, what are you guys doing here? And he called me and he asked me. And you know what? I just loved on him. I said, you know, we always expect sinners or non-Christians to come to church, but the church people needs to go to the non-Christian environments. And, be, and I said to that barman, because you are so valuable to God, we are going to use some of your space tonight to train and equip leaders uh, in the Word of God and this is right here at your place where you are working. That's how important you are. Well, that man's face just changed. And the smile and the delightfulness. He felt that God did not reject him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That is so powerful. Oh, Les Harris. Yeah, there, there he is. Somebody just bore witness in what I've said. Les Harris. Uh, let me bring that up on the screen. Look at this. Uh, Les Harris, remember, went with hotel, you, Jeff, and myself. There you go. There's a witness. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, I just impart truth, and it's all facts. It's all truth. 
and uh, we had a great time. Yeah, thank you, Les. Les, uh, how many years we know each other now? So many years, huh? Uh, we here. What? Let me see. Is it about uh, thirty years that we know each other? However, Les used to be our treasurer and a leader in the church, and what a great man of God. Okay, all right. So back here. Uh, so I'm going to get into at least one foundation. So let me just uh, finish with this introduction. All right. So uh, uh, discipleship. There is a call to build relationships on three levels with God, and uh, following Jesus and helping others. Follow Jesus happens within the community. No matter where you are in your discipleship journey, we must engage the, uh, our community or get engaged with our community. We encourage you to be part of a group that will go out there and connect with people in the community. Yes, somebody says, but uh, I love dancing. Can I go to a dance? God bless you, uh, Gilbert. God bless you. Thank you for encouragement there. And, uh, uh, you know, you can dance as much as you want to. It's between you and God. Yeah. So the discipleship uh, journey follows a four-part process. God bless you, Rich. Uh, that four-part process, uh, because everybody is valuable to God, we engage in different cultures and communities because everyone will grow as our lives are built on Christ and we establish biblical foundations. And I'm about to unravel the first one to you, okay? Because ministry is not only, watch this, ministry is not only a full-time minister's thing. No. We equip believers to minister. That's right. We reach, R-E-A-C-H. We reach people, right? And uh, when you reach people, you reach one, and the E, you equip them, and the A is for activate them. And uh, uh, then we need to obviously plan them. So let's uh, use a better word, uh, reap, R-E-A-P. Let's go and reap the harvest. Let's use that rather, okay? R-E-A-P, R to reach. One person, e, equip them. A, activate what you have equipped them with. And P, plan them so that they can become ministers for God in his kingdom. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The R-E-A-P, the REAP principle. Let me bring this up here on your uh, uh, screen. Let me just put the... R-E-A-P, and enter it. Here we go, and bring it over here. So let's develop this mentality today. Reap. R, go and reach one, the R. Because we want to reap the harvest. So R, let's go and reach one. Number two, let's equip them. And number three, activate that individual. Don't just dump the word on them and scriptures activate something in their life what you've imparted okay and uh, then p plan them in something that they can become a doer and not just a hearer let me take i'm going to leave that reap there let me put that uh, over there all right so let me get to that first foundation that uh, uh, we were introduced to, okay? And uh, perhaps let me just say this before I get into that foundation. If there's ever a time to get involved with people's problems and needs, it is now. If, 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 you, if we only look for those that have got it already made in a sense of, you know, they don't feel that they need God. 
they become sometimes the most complicated, difficult people. And it's like, man, you're plowing and plowing and you're reaping nothing. You're sowing, sowing and reaping nothing. I believe that it is more a winter season where we need to find people with problems and then offer a solution, a little prayer with them, encouragement, and ask how you can assist them. And that's exactly what Jesus did in making a disciple. Think about this. He didn't bombard them with a word. Let me hit you with a word. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. What Jesus did is he found the fishermen. These are people that cussed and what have you. <laughs> and they were rough. You know, Peter was pretty rough, right? Simon who became Peter. After three years with Jesus uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, after three years with Jesus, uh, when Jesus walked uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, Calvary, uh, that final uh, moment where he says, not my will be done, your will be done. The soldiers came and he says, let's go and face my betrayer. And then Peter just pulls out his pocket knife and cut the man's ear off. <laughs> it, it was like, Peter, what's up with you? You know, I mean, or took his sword or knife, whatever, and he cut the man's ear off. Uh, how about that? Jesus didn't have saints on his team. <laughs> he went now uh he went to this fishing business and these guys could not catch any fish that whole night jesus became the solution and he changed the atmosphere by ch uh, teaching a little something from the word whatever he said to them and uh, then he says now cast your nets out there and they caught so many fish i mean at first they said no we've you know, we try it and try and blah, blah, blah. Jesus kept at it. Jesus solved a problem. And then he said to them, come follow me. And they followed there. You see, when we get involved with people's problems and people's uh, difficulties, we can offer them a solution. But those solutions are in these foundations that I'm going to share with you. We're not going to do all the foundations. Definitely not today. No. I'm going to introduce you to one. All right. I've got just a few moments left. So minister to people's felt needs. And, uh, you know, uh, there's like an expression, inch people closer to Jesus. Keep pulling them closer to Jesus. Everybody wants to be loved, encouraged, and appreciated. And I'm going to go to gym today. And there's already another person's need that I would like to get involved with in administering encouragement and they shared yesterday at the gym so that's interesting okay the first foundation are you ready <laughs> are you ready I'm just going to introduce you to it and then tomorrow we God willing we will minister further on it okay this was our very first foundation uh, besides having confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then, uh, you know, after that, you now follow these foundations and uh, so forth. Now, uh, spiritual growth, I call it like spiritual growth discipleship. You want people to grow spiritually, okay? The first thing as a foundation that was laid in our lives is to find or to have found out, we have now received abundant life. Abundant life. Now we can enjoy fellowship with God. Now we can enter God's presence without feeling guilty. See? And the foundation that I've received and my Lizzie uh, was abundant life it's a whole lesson here it is from those days maybe less you will remember that and it says uh, bluff revival okay so uh, uh, and i've still got these lessons with me absolutely when you find out what abundant life is really about and how to stay in a zone of feeling joyful 
feeling encouraged, feeling comforted. There's things you have to know. Okay. Now, God is a spirit. So being a disciple, you've got to get to know God in spirit. To get to know God in spirit, there's a, another foundation that you need. And I'm not going to get into that right now. All right. These things are so rich in my spirit. I just want to give you all six in one. <laughs> but it's too much. So number one, God created man to have abundant life. Man was created in God's image, Genesis 1.27, and uh, man was created in his likeness to rule and reign. Um, uh, he possessed, man possessed God's life, Adam and Eve, they possessed God's life. Uh, man had no weakness, no pain, no poverty, no death. Yeah, man was in a perfect relationship with God. But man lost that abundant life by disobeying God. It was not eating the fruit uh, uh, like an apple. Somebody says, it must have been an apple. No, it's not an apple. It's the forbidden fruit. If it was an apple, then every day I eat an apple, I must be sinning. No, it's not. Uh, the, uh, the fruit uh, or the, you know, of that tree. It was exercising Adam and them exercised their will above God's will, and that caused them to lose their abundant life. Okay? And when they exercised their um, authority, when they exercised their authority, let me bring this up on your screen as well. Uh, you can see there on my, on my left side, uh, foundations this is a discipleship class and uh, even at our church at crossroads church if you're in the area this is what we're gonna teach and train people and reinforce discipleship as you can see there's a little uh, card there and i'm giving each person in the congregation uh, a bundle of cards and they need to pray and ask God to connect them divinely with other people and then disciple them with the things we're going to disciple people with. Amen. All right. So abundant life back there. So uh, man had abundant life because man had fellowship with God. Man was uh, under God's authority. Man yielded to God's uh, obedience, uh, Adam and Eve, and uh, they had daily fellowship with God uh, all the time. But then they chose to exercise their will above God's will. And that's when they sinned because Eve had a conversation with the devil. We are never to have a conversation with the devil. When you start listening to the devil's voice, you're about to be deceived. Uh, we need to just rebuke the devil. Say, you get behind me, Satan, period. And listen to God's a voice. Now, God's voice is his written word. That's why you need to read the Bible. The first thing we do when we make a disciple is we make sure that they have a Bible as well and a good uh, Bible that they can read. Okay. So men lost abundant life because they disobeyed God. And that's all in Genesis 3. Read chapter 3 in Genesis chapter, you know, uh, 3, of course. A man lost their authority. They died spiritually and brought sin into this world. Okay. And that released a curse, unfortunately. But we know who removed that curse, right? We're going to get there. We know that that curse was removed in Christ Jesus. But the curse came because man exercised their will above uh, the Father's will. And, you know, in Romans 3, 23 or so, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Is that right? Let me just uh, double check there. It should be uh, uh, 3, 23, where it is. There we go. For all have sinned, yeah, and fallen short of the glory of God. Okay. Now, how did they regain abundant life? Are you ready? 
they came to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Jesus is the last Adam. And I'm keeping it very simple, not deep theology and deep explanations. No, we've got to keep it simple. We've got to keep it simple, okay? Jesus came to bring life. John 10.10, 10, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And when you receive Jesus, uh, what is this? Sow the seeds, brother. Oh, hallelujah. Let me put that up, what Les is saying. Sow the seeds, brother. And another will water it, but God gives the increase. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And brother Rich there, strong disciple of God too. And Kim and everyone else that's watching. Okay, so the abundant life was regained by confessing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Remember Jesus said, come. Then what did he say? Uh, in that process, he says, come. And I'm just going back there. Uh, Matthew 4.90, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Very simple. Come, follow, and I'll make you fishers of men. So once you've got these foundations, you've got to get involved with people. See, and once you get involved with people, every time you hand out by, you know, teaching or training somebody, you're strengthening your foundation. The way to keep it is to give it out. That's how the kingdom works. So man regained abundant life. And uh, uh, now the man became born again. Born again. By the Spirit of God in John 3, 3, okay, and verse 5 and so forth. And uh, man, now in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, a new nature has been imparted. Now you become a new creation. Oh, hallelujah. The old has gone. And you share with people, the day you receive Jesus Christ is the day that your past is wiped out. And uh, don't let the devil remind you of your past. You remind him of your future, that you're going to be eternity spent with God forever. And you remind the devil that he is under the judgment of God because at Calvary, Jesus Christ stripped him of every power and authority. Now, demonic powers are in subjection to Christ Jesus. Okay, now that, that was a little bit heavy for the first time, but... Uh, when you disciple, you tell the individual, you are now a new creation. The old is gone. You have a brand new start from this day forward. And the beautiful thing is, God does not hold your sin against you. And if you do happen to do something that is not right, now your conscience will begin to convict you. And when you sense that, all you do is you respond and do what is right and say, God, please forgive me. Help me, strengthen me by your Holy Spirit. That's it. You see? So, and Jesus became our very curse at Calvary. He took our punishment. He took our uh, uh, shortcomings upon himself and exchanged his flesh for our flesh. This is a frail body. This is a corrupt body. And yet God deposited his perfection God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit inside of this body now. And this body is now called the body of Christ, carrying God's divine presence. How cool is that? See? Because Jesus Christ dealt with this flesh at Calvary. You're not guilty. You're not under condemnation. And if you do make a mistake, your flesh, Jesus already paid the price at Calvary for this old stinking flesh. <laughs> and you know and I know that this fleshly body has to return back to dust. That's why Jesus says, put, put no confidence in this old stinking flesh. He didn't say stinking. Ah, that's what I'm saying. He says, put no confidence in the flesh. All right. And so uh, uh, the assurance of abundant life. We're just about through. Okay. Now, how do you know you, you've got your abundant life back? When you sense that you have to ask for forgiveness when you've done something wrong. That's your assurance that you've got abundant life. Your assurance of abundant life is in Matthew 3, verse 1 to 8. Please read it. And of course, uh, Acts 
238 that you've received Jesus. Let me just go to Acts 238, Acts 238, Acts 2. We're just about closing, okay? Uh, Acts 238. I'm trying to make it so simplistic. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So your first foundation. Oh, thank you, Kim. Thank you. Let me just put that out there. Bless you. And Rhonda, I see also, and so many others are watching. Great. So, uh, so how do you know that you have abundant life? When you get convicted, and then when you repent, Repent means I'm going to change my mind, my thought patterns, realign it with the Word of God. That's it. And now, revival, times of refreshing will come over you. Okay? And then produce the fruit of repentance. When you start walking in more obedience. Now, at first it's difficult, but that's why God's grace is there to strengthen us in our weakness. You, at first, Okay, you make a mistake. You just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Now the devil will say, you're no good. You're no good as a Christian. Don't listen to that voice. Don't listen to that voice. See, the devil will condemn. The devil will put guilt. The devil will bring up your past. The devil will say, you're never going to make it. Don't listen to that voice. You embrace the voice of God. And the fact that you got convicted and you felt uneasy, that means you have entered into, you have entered into, uh, let me just put this over here so everybody can see that down there. There we go. Uh, you have just entered into eternal life that has been activated. That is a reassurance that you have got your abundant uh, life back. When you are still convicted and you still want to repent, that means you're living in the zone of abundant life. Glory to God. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, part of this first foundation, read the Bible. Okay. Remember, the Bible is God's final authority. That's it. Okay. And keep renewing your mind by reading scriptures. Because faith comes by reading the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. That's your first lesson. Hallelujah. Give him some praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now remember, as we close, God has got plans not to harm you or hurt you, but to give you hope and a future. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. God bless you. This is part one. And uh, also, I want to ask you to uh, sow a seed. That is right. Uh, if you're benefiting through this program, sow a seed and help us uh, because the end of the year is here. By December, I have to renew programs so I can bring up and be much more effective with things here through the live streaming. Surprise yourself. Write out a check to AIM. Mail it to Box 485. And may the Lord, may the Lord bless, 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 bless your seed. Amen. And if you're in the area, if you're in the area, come and visit us at Crossroads Church. Amen. Come and visit us there. And at Crossroads Church, we're going to make disciples. Somebody says, why Crossroads Church? Because everybody is at a crossroad in their life. It is just like that. When you wake up, you're at a crossroad. Caffeinated coffee? Decaffeinated. <laughs> what color dress? What color shirt? Crossroads. Our whole life is one of a crossroad. God bless you until next time. Holy kiss. Love you. Bye now. And by the way, go and train somebody with this lesson today. Bye now.